with a camera. Starring Charles Bronson. Livelihood depends on the results you get with a camera. You have to be careful about your sources of information, especially if the source is Jimmy Costigan, a freelance reporter. Normally, I wouldn't trust Costigan with a used flash bulb, but the story he told me sounded big, if it was true. Where do we meet him? I'll show you. You got your camera? I always had my camera. Why did you call me in? Look, I have a date with a dame who's supposed to be dead, murdered, but who'd believe me? I'm a confirmed liar. I don't believe you. But you'll believe what your camera sees, right? Well, so will the DA's office. And if we come up with a picture of Helen Sprague, it'll be the biggest thing since Jumbo. Yeah, we might come up with the biggest hoax since Jumbo. Come on, get in. has to be kind of sneaky. After all, this girl's letting a guy be tried for a murder and she doesn't want to be photographed. There's some dame standing back there in the darkest spot in the alley. You can hardly see her in the shadows. Yeah, well, this can't. just got a glimpse of her in the light from the flash. Well, is she Helen Spray? Well, she said she was. I can't be sure. Well, let's get this developed and find out. Come on. Howard Dawn, popular nightclub singer and recording star, was being indicted for the murder of Helen Sprague, even though the police could not find her body. The papers had given the story a big play. What I had in the developer was proof, maybe, that Helen Sprague was alive and that Howard Dawn was innocent of any crime. Come on in. Close that door before you open the curtain, will you? Did you get anything? Well, it's starting to come through now. It's her. That's her, Helen Sprague. She isn't dead. It looks like it, but let's make sure. Are you convinced? Man, I've got the biggest story in my life and you've got the biggest picture. Absolute proof beyond any shadow of a doubt that Helen Sprague is alive. That's pretty strong, isn't it? You've got eyes, haven't you? Yes, my eyes say we found her. So do my ears. The dame told me she was Helen Sprague. You heard her. Well, that's what I can't understand. Why did she come forward if she wanted to run? She explained that to me on the phone. If she goes to the police, they throw her in jail for obstructing justice. But at the last minute, she couldn't stand by and see Dorn tried for her murder. Nothing could be plainer. There's one thing that could. What? If you arrange this whole thing, a hoax, just to get a big story. After all, you told me you were a liar. If we've made a mistake, your big story and my big camera will let a murderer loose. The 
picture caused a big sensation. And I got a big price for it. So did Costigan for his feature articles. But the assistant DA, Paul Hatton, was plenty unhappy. You broke the DA's case wide open. How do you like it, Kovac? Dorn's free thanks to your picture. Well, I brought the negative along in case your lab wants to check it. You'll see that it wasn't touched up or faked. Our office had circumstantial evidence enough for an indictment on Dorn. He had a motive. He openly threatened to kill Helen Sprague. He bought a gun through underworld channels. Helen Sprague disappearing at the same time. It all added up. Well, I just pushed the button. The film tells the story. Dorn had all the motive in the world for killing her. And he still has it. How would you like the job of guarding Helen Sprague wherever she is? Oh, I know. The camera tells the story. There's just one more thing, Kovac. It's your reputation that set Dorn free. I can't doubt your photo. Nor the fact that it's a new picture taken last night. But Costigan, he's been known to rig a story. Fill me in on this one, chapter one. Well, Costigan phoned me. He said he received a call from a girl identifying herself as Helen Sprague. Now, she wanted him to meet her. He wanted me along to take a picture to prove his story. Chapter two? Well, I don't know. Okay. Send Costigan in. Yes, sir. What's the matter, Hatton? Beginning to doubt your eyes as well as your ears. Oh, I knew you'd doubt my story, but I didn't think you'd doubt that photograph. Hatton, you don't still believe that Helen Sprague is dead, do you? I don't know. But let me tell you one thing. If I find that this photo's a fake, I'll be seeing you. Don't think I won't. You'll look good in handcuffs. Monty, what are you doing here? Hello, Mike. Hey, what's the idea of busting in here like this? I'm just sitting here getting madder and madder. Getting madder about what? What's wrong with you anyhow? You know, Pete, you don't look like your old happy self. I thought you were traveling that grunt and groan circuit. I want to see you about the picture you took of my girl. Your girl? Now, where is she? What do you mean, your girl? Pete, I think you've had too many hard times. That's so... <laughs> I owe you one, Pete. Now, she ducked out on me two days ago. Where is she, Mike? Since when did you start running around with Helen Sprague? Yeah. I seen that name under a picture, Helen Sprague. Did she tell you that name? Pete, do you mean that your girlfriend looks like Helen Sprague? No, she don't look like Helen Sprague or nobody else. She looks like Connie Sawyer, my girl. Now, this is my babe, Connie. She run out on me and I want to find her. What makes you so sure that this is Connie Sawyer? Her earrings. Take a look at them. How could I mistake them that set me back 50 bucks? Connie wouldn't pot with those gems, and she wouldn't give them to no Helen Sprague. Pete, this is very important. Now take another good long look at that photo. Are you sure that's Connie Sawyer and not just the earrings? Her hair is nice and soft and black. She sure is pretty, isn't she? But I'm as sure as a guy can ever be about a dame. What, with the way they keep changing their makeup and their hair color? It's Connie, all right. But the girl's hair in this photo is a different color than Connie Sawyer's was the last time you saw her, right? So what? She even dyed it orange once. Now, you listen. My girl would die before she'd pot with them 50-buck earrings. Hey, where are you going? Out. I want to check on something. Ah, oh, you ain't going no place till you tell me where I find Connie. 
Okay, Pete. Will you do me a favor first? What? Stand back there a little bit. Why? I want to take your picture. All you have to do, Pete, is watch the birdies. <coughs> I owed you one. When you wake up, get a photo of your girl and meet me back here at eight. I was in serious trouble if Pete Monty was telling a straight story. But there was no record of a Connie Sawyer at the usual sources of information. Costigan denied all knowledge of a Connie Sawyer. Even helped me search through the newspaper's morgue of photographs. I even tried a model agency, which was interesting, but no Connie. I checked several places around Midtown Manhattan without luck, but then I realized I might have been looking in the wrong places. Pete Monty's girl probably came from a different district altogether. Why not start looking here, in that dark alley where Costigan and I had gone to meet Helen Spring? Policeman? No. Then why did you come in the back way? There was a girl that ran down that alley last night. This is the only door she could have come into. All right, so I had a customer. Ah, oh, this thing. I can't raise nothing. Well, maybe the phone's dead. Everything around here dies at the same time. I'm looking for a girl named Connie Sawyer. I want to talk to her. In that booth. She ain't talking, though. policeman. Bone's dead, too. You mind telling me what happened here? Connie came in with a guy. They took that booth. The guy must have left when my back was turned. What kind of guy? A customer, that's all. I never look at him. I just wait on him. A man, a guy. How do I know? Maybe if they buy a drink, I take a look. But not at the stiffs that just buy coffee. Well, I think you better get to a phone that works and call the police, tell them a girl has been strangled here. Well, I tell them about you. Well, if you talk to a guy called Hatton, you tell him I took off for South America. Listen and listen good. The plans are all changed. I've got to get out of town. And I want the money now, fast, all of it. Now, oh, don't get excited. I got the money out of the bank, but how can I bring it to you? The police are watching me. Well, I don't care how you shake the police. 
but shake them. What if I can't? Listen, buddy boy, you're not the only singer in the world. If I have to, I can sing beautifully. Okay, I'll get it to you somehow. But where? Bring it to Mike Kovac's apartment. 227 West Waverly Place. Now, have you got a gun? Yes, I happen to have one, but why? Suddenly, Mike Kovac's in the way. That's why I want the money and the gun in a hurry. All right, I'll bring them. Get it, Pete? Here. It's the only one over I got. That was when her hair was yellow. Where was you? Well, I was looking. Did you find Connie? Pete, I think you better give me a minute. I don't know what I found yet, okay? What you doing? I retouched John. Just going to change the makeup and the hair a little bit. Gee, you're making her look better. You're giving my babe class, Mike. Now that's real class. I always did like her when her hair was black. Blacker than a dark alley on Skid Road. Man, you're sure making my girl beautiful. Hey, it's her. I mean, it ain't her. I'm all mixed up. Maybe my girl is somebody else. Or maybe you hit me one too hard. Hatton, this is Mike Kovac. This time you listen. You know, you were right. It was a big hoax. Somebody found a girl who looked enough like Helen Sprague with makeup and a different hair job. Yeah, I can prove it. Then they had me take the photo of her. Yeah, Helen Sprague is probably dead now. So is the other girl. She was strangled. Well, the dead girl is... Well, you'll find her at Tony's spot. It's on Delgado Street. Yeah. Her name... Her name is Connie Sawyer. Pete, I'm so sorry. I had to hit you too hard this time. Somebody killed my girl, Mike? Yeah, I'm real sorry, Pete. Mike, who did it? I don't know. And why? Pete, I wish I knew that too. Bribery, money the wrong way, Pete, the dirty way. How could anybody hurt Connie for a couple of lousy bucks? Mike, they accused me of taking a dive the other day. But what's taking a dive compared to killing a girl for money? Yeah, yeah, I took that dive. But Mike, I didn't hurt nobody. Drink this. Come on, drink it. All the way, Pete. All of it. I guess I'd better go and think about all this.
Costigan, why didn't you knock? He didn't give me time. It was Pete Montee, wasn't it? Yeah, he's an old friend of mine. Did you find that girl we were looking for? Yeah. Take a good long look at that photo. Well, they look the same. But this has been retouched. You're wrong, Costigan. I just changed the makeup of the girl. Connie saw you looked enough like Helen Sprague, so all I had to do was change her makeup and her hairdo. So what? So I think you try to palm Connie Sawyer off on me as Helen Sprague, that's what. Palm Connie? I did not. Why would I? I don't know why, but I think you would. Oh, I would, Mike. If I had a reason, a motive. Motive, that's the important thing. This being a freelance reporter is pretty tough, isn't it, Costigan? I know. It's maybe just as tough as being a freelance photographer. Only one difference. I do it by choice. But I think that you're forced into it. There's no steady income. If you want to make a buck, you have to go out and sweat for it. You take a coffee break, it costs you time. Nobody else, just you. I don't understand what you're getting at. If you want to eat, you have to keep your nose to the grindstone and plug away all the time. I know how tough it is. You either work or you starve. I've done both, Costigan, I know. Does this have something to do with motive? Maybe the motive of a man who's a coward. The kind of a man who lies a lot. A man who can't hold down a steady job. The kind of a man who can't make it freelancing. In other words, Costigan, a man who's got the motive for making money the easy way. What easy way? Lots of easy ways. The ways of a coward. The kind of a coward who goes out and strangles a girl. Some un poor unfortunate girl from Delgado Street. And that's you. I'm not sure what you're driving at, Kovac. But I'm getting fed up. Come in, Dawn. Dawn? What took you so long? I had to change cabs three times to shake it. Is it all right to talk in front of him? That depends on what you brought. Well, you two were buddies. Which one of you arranged this hoax? Costigan, how did he find Shut it? up, Dawn. What did you bring? The money. And what else? You might as well know. You're not going to be around much longer anyway. Costigan was interviewing me at the jail. He asked me how much it'd be worth to get out from under a murder charge. And what did you offer him? The money. Kovac seems to know everything. Mr. Kovac is a smart man. Did you kill Helen Sprague? Tell him, Howard, you've got the gun. Yeah, I had to. She was beating me white with blackmail. Who killed Connie Sawyer? Over here. That's my job, Mike. I work for Dorn. And you were so right. I don't like it freelance. And you're just about man enough to pull that trigger, huh? Exactly man enough. Why don't you use your hands like you use them on that girl? This'll do. could have helped me. Well, I never wrestled doubles, Mike. Never wrestled more than man to man. Wouldn't know what to do in the ring with a partner. Oh, Pete. These just aren't partners. They're murderers. Well, they tell us we'll get suspended if we ever hit anybody outside the ring. Operator, get me the police department, will you? Pete, if you didn't want to help me, why did you come back? Well, I came back to see if you'd let me have back that picture of my girl. The one you fixed up all pretty. You made her hair soft and black, the way it used to be when I first seen her. Police.
Post no bills, buddy. Well, oh, the Red Cross, that's different. Yeah, you joined up yet, like me?